Here we are once again in logical reasoning, drill set number one. We're going to go straight to the questions, and we're going to pick up at question four, which is one of the most common logical reasoning question types that you can encounter on the exam, which is something asking for an assumption on which the argument depends. So as always, we're going to highlight our question task, and you really can just highlight the word assumption because that should be indicative of what you're being asked to do because an assumption is such an integral part of any argument. It's something that must be 100% true in order for the argument to logically stand. So now we're going to go to the left-hand side of the screen and evaluate the prompt seeking the conclusion and highlighting that conclusion so that we focus specifically on the issue at hand, trying to find that assumption that is necessary to believe the argument in full. So reading from the beginning, patents are issued only for inventions that are both novel and useful. That's just a fact, so we keep going. Because of rapid advances in the field of computer science, an extremely high number of patents issued last year were issued for computer algorithms. Again, just a fact. These are some statements. No conclusion here. However, a new law prohibits the issue of patents for computer algorithms. Again, this clause is just a fact, not a conclusion. And thus, there's our conclusion indicator term, the number of patents issued this year will be significantly less than it would have been otherwise. So we will highlight everything after thus, as our conclusion that we want to focus upon. Now, we keep that tool highlighted because we want to be identifying reasons to eliminate as we go to expedite our evaluation of the problem. So, starting with choice A, we've got, were it not for the new law, some computer algorithms would receive patents this year. Considering this, we go, well, the new law is relevant, computer algorithms are relevant, and receiving patents this year is certainly relevant. So there's nothing to immediately eliminate for in choice A. And when it comes to assumption tasks in particular, you might just leave anything that seems broadly relevant open because you can use what is known as the negation test to determine whether an answer choice is an assumption if necessary. So we'll just hold on to A because there's nothing immediately apparent as far as a reason to eliminate. Now, choice B, we have last year more than half of the patents issued were for computer algorithms. Again, we're talking about patents. We're talking about computer algorithms. We're talking about last year. Maybe this one seems relevant as well. So we'll hold on to B. Then we get to choice C. The field of computer science is responsible for the majority of recent inventions. Well, we're talking about the patents for computer algorithms, not the entire field of computer science. Furthermore, we don't really broach the idea of recent inventions at all in this argument. So I feel pretty confident for either of those reasons to eliminate choice C. Then we've got choice D, which says of the computer algorithms that were submitted for patents in the past several years. OK, we're talking about last year versus this year. As soon as I see past several years, I go, that's not going to be directly relevant. So we can eliminate that. And lastly, with choice E, we have more patents for novel and useful inventions were issued last year than will be issued this year. And we might think to ourselves, more patents, talking about novel and useful inventions, that's in the paragraph, but it's the very first statement. And if we were to interrogate that quantity of more patents, what if it's one more patent? Well, it doesn't really do much to the argument. Could it be a million new patents? Maybe, but again, it's not clearly identifying the quantity of more, and we know that the number of patents issued this year is supposed to be significantly less, and that isn't clearly impacted by choice E, so we can eliminate it for that ambiguous quantity of more patents. Now, when we're down to two options, we can apply that negation test, and the way an assumption functions within any argument is that it is absolutely necessary to believe the conclusion. So to negate a choice, what you have to do is apply a technically opposing quantity or just remove the word not or add the word not to the main verb of the choice. And both A and B have some clear quantifiers that we can just negate. So starting with choice B, and I'm going to just change my highlighting tool color here so I can see we basically want to do the opposite of more. So instead of saying more than half, not more than half or less than half. And again, it could be pretty ambiguous what that means, and you might get the inclination from choice E's evaluation as to why this more isn't really going to be necessary as an assumption. So we just said last year, 
not more than half of the patents issued were for computer algorithms. Okay, so it wasn't fully half, but I mean, if we take away 40%, that's a pretty significant decrease. Still has a conclusion that logically follows. So when we take away choice B, the argument still stands. So I'm going to just go ahead and eliminate that because when we negated it, the argument didn't fail. But if we look at choice A, it says, were it not for the new law? Now, be careful. Don't negate that knot. That is a descriptive knot, not an action knot. So you don't want to negate the qualifier or the quantifying phrase. You need to negate the main part of the choice. And in this case, it says some computer algorithms would receive patents this year. So we highlight that sum. And the opposite of sum, because sum can be any number greater than zero, the opposite of sum is going to be none. So if we said, were it not for the new law, no computer algorithms would receive patents this year. Well, now my argument fails, because if the computer algorithms weren't going to receive patents anyway, then the number of patents is not going to be less than it would have otherwise been because of this new law. There just wouldn't have been computer algorithm patents, period. So choice A is very much necessary in its affirmative form to believe the argument and is therefore our correct assumption on which this argument about the number of patents depends. So. You can see once again how using that highlight tool is really helpful to expedite this evaluation, but practice more problems like this and we'll be back with question five in our next video.